person who gave me this webcam so that I could communicate with him. But he's not there, so I've decided to talk to you instead. Welcome to my kitchen sink. It is the story of a young woman who's living in Tasmania and her husband's going off to save the whales and she's left alone with her two young boys and she's going a bit stir crazy and she's creative so she puts these songs on the web and they become a phenomenon and then my character decides that it would be good to turn that into an even bigger phenomenon and use her for an advertising campaign which forces the heroine of our story into a dilemma where she must choose between fame and family. In a nutshell. You don't need to see the film now. No, I will just mime it. Now I'll do it in mime for you. <laughs> okay, so, Laura, you're kind of new to us, but you're kind of a big deal, basically, as far as I can tell. So you, you performed on Broadway, you performed on The West End, Les Mis, Mary Poppins, uh, Mamma Mia, and then suddenly you find yourself singing... Uh, in Tasmania wearing a bunch of rubber gloves. Is that one of those moments where you're just like, I've made terrible life choices or I've made brilliant life choices? <laughs> no, well, I read the script. I absolutely loved it. It's just a fun idea. And it's something that everybody's doing. I think this is the first movie to explore someone achieving fame through a webcam. Musicals are such great fun. And, and having, I loved having a big diva moment with all of the dancing boys. That, that was really... Just, I was in hog heaven doing that. I just absolutely loved it. And it was great to play a character that's so different from anything that I've done before. I really relish playing men characters. You know, that is the essence of me and that character. Um, and, but I've been doing Sharon for a long time, so it's kind of nice to just dust off the mean side of me. <laughs> but she's nothing like the Uber bitch she's playing in this movie. Absolutely nothing. Like you just don't know me very truth. well. You just have to say that because when with the camera's off she'll beat you. Yeah, <laughs> she's being all Christian and loving about it. <laughs> it's a big, bright, fun, kind of larger than life musical but what's really striking about it is that underneath all that there's actually a really serious kind of feminism conversation in there about you know, what kind of woman do you want to be? What do you have to give up? And the way women compete with each other. I'm curious for both of you, what do you think the message of the movie is in that regard? But also in terms of feminism and women's roles, there's an evolution in it in that my character is a woman who's wielding power at a very different age and stage of her life, you know, coming from a di very different kind of feminism compared to your character. And that's what's going on in the world. You know, when I was younger, they were very different sorts of decisions that you were making. And now there's kind of an awareness that, you know, throwing the baby out with the bathwater, as it were, that perhaps there are things that we're losing by entering into the corporate sphere, which my character, the corporate bitch, has done. And what do you have to sacrifice along the way to, you know, cracking the glass ceiling? So I think it shows that now feminism is in, a, is in quite a different place, I think. That feminism is actually a supple and very complicated thing and it's as much about helping, helping men to escape the roles that they're confined in and be fully realised humans. I mean, I'm Jungian about it. You've got to have your anima and your animus, your yin and your yang. And, you know, I, I was born in the 60s and I would... Don't, don't go sort of reminiscing about how great things were way back when... I did want to ask you a little bit about your career in, in musical theatre because you've had quite an amazing career and some very, very big titles, but you've also travelled around the world a lot. Do you feel a little bit like a nomad going from the States to the UK to Australia to the States? You know what, it's the, it's the choice you make. Is that, you? OK, so there's some good work coming up over here. Do I want to take that? Will it affect my family? And, um, and I, I do take a risk because um, I, Skype is saving my life and I get quality time with my friends and my family on Skype pretty much all the time. The other element for you, and this is one of those things I gleaned from reading your Twitter feed, which is not at all creepy at all, is that <laughs> you take your faith quite seriously from what I understand yeah, as I well. Yeah, I do. Has that ever been a challenge in the showbiz industry, as it were? Well, I I think some people just assume if you've got a faith that you, it comes with all these other things that um, that could potentially, um, I, especially, I mean, in the gay community, actually, um, you might find this interesting. Um, I have often found some people really don't, uh, they worry that I wouldn't love them or accept them or even that they've been hurt by people that have got a faith before and so that they just avoid you. And I'd rather be that one person that never does that, that always accepts and loves people as they are. So how does that work in terms of things like 
you know, gay marriage, marriage equality, how do you rationalise that? Because obviously you, you work in the theatre. Yeah. There's quite a fair few gay people in the theatre and yeah. you're quite outspoken about marriage equality as well. So how do you rationalise that for you? Well, I want to get married. <laughs> I'm single. I've been single a really long time. And I think to, to love your neighbour as yourself is how you would wish it to be for you. What would you say to Christians that don't accept? Don't accept. Well, I think it's down to the individual and who they are to make choices that they wish to make. And I think every person has their own DNA and relationship with God, the way that they believe, whether he exists or he doesn't, that they each have a relationship with him personally. And I think that that's really important.